Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting exponential equation. We have negative 2 to the power x equals 2. And we're going to be solving for x values. I'm also going to show you the result from Wolfram Alpha. We're going to compare what we find with what Wolfram Alpha gives us. And we'll talk about it. So, we have a negative base, which is kind of problematic from a standpoint of real numbers, but with complex numbers, things are a little different. So, here's what we're going to do. We're going to write both numbers in polar form and then use the natural log and come up with a solution. And we're going to look at some specific cases and then, like I said earlier, we're going to compare our results to Wolfram Alpha. Let's get started. So, negative 2, gra when graphed, is going to be on the left hand side of the real axis and we have an imaginary axis obviously so two units to the left and it's represented by two things one of them is the r which is the modulus and the other one is going to be the theta that the angle that it makes with the positive x-axis okay so the first thing is modulus modulus is the distance from zero on the coordinate plane and it would be two units in other words the absolute value of negative two is positive two and the angle is going to be pi radians, or 180 degrees. So we can go ahead and write our numbers, negative uh, 2, as follows. r, which is 2, times e to the power i pi. But I'd like to write it as pi i. It doesn't matter. Same thing, right? Great. What about the right-hand side? The right-hand side has a 2. Now, we're going to raise this number, and this is only one of the branches, obviously. You can come up with infinitely many branches because it's kind of like a complex exponentiation. But x will basically take care of all the solutions, right? Correct me if I'm wrong. But for 2, we can represent it in multiple ways, and we have to consider all of those because that's going to give you a bunch of options. So 2 can be written as... Pretty much the same idea. This time you have the 2, but it's on the right-hand side. And the angle it makes is 0 degrees or 0 radians, which you can also write as 2 pi, 4 pi, or just multiples of 2 pi radians. So we can basically write the 2 as 2 times e to the power 2n pi i, where n is an integer. Okay? Positive or negative doesn't matter, because multiples of 2 pi are always going to be equivalent to 0. All right? So if we were able to write these two numbers in polar form, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and plug them into our equation and go for the x. Okay, let's go ahead and do it. Our equation was negative 2 to the power x equals 2. Obviously, this is kind of, you know, problematic uh, from a real numbers perspective because you have a negative number and then you're raising it to a power. If the if negative 2 to the power x equals 4 was the equation, then you could easily say, hey, x equals 2 is a solution. But that would not be the only solution. Okay? Anyways, so re replace negative 2 with 2 times i to the power pi i, raise it to the power x, and then replace the 2 with 2 times e to the power 2n pi i. Again, n is an integer. 2n pi represents multiples of 2 pi. Okay. Now, you can go ahead and distribute the x inside, but instead of that, let's go ahead and natural log both sides because that would get rid of the exponents. So let's go ahead and first move this stuff a little bit like that. And then let's go ahead and natural log both sides. We're going to do ln and we're going to do ln. Okay. And then we're going to get the following. Move the x to the front, x ln. 2 times e to the power pi i. And then now this is a product, so we can write it as ln 2 plus ln e to the power 2n pi i. Make sense? Okay, we're just using we're just using properties of logs, which tells us whenever there's an exponent like ln a to the power b, you can write it as b ln a. And anytime we have something like ln a times b, you can write it as ln a plus and B. So those are the two properties that we used so far. And it, this applies to all the bases, not just LN. 
So now we have a product, so we've got to use the product rule one more time. Let's take the x out because that's going to be a sum. So x will be distributed over the sum because here it's basically being multiplied directly by the ln of our product. So we're going to write as ln 2, be careful about that, plus ln e to the power pi i equals ln 2 plus, what about this? Oh, we can use the power property one more time. You see, it's all about using the properties of logs. And that's going to give us 2 and pi i multiplied by ln e, but ln e is equal to 1. So we don't have to worry about it. Same thing happens here. ln e is equal to 1. We can go ahead and bring this to the front. And we're going to get the following. x times ln 2 plus pi i equals ln 2 plus 2n pi i. So if you go ahead and divide both sides by ln 2 plus pi i, we're going to get x equals ln 2 plus 2n pi i divided by ln 2 plus pi i. So that's going to be the answer, obviously. And now we can go ahead and talk about some specific cases and compare our answers. So here, n is an integer. For example, why is, uh, why is it important that n is an integer? Because if you think about it, we have the equation negative 2 to the power x equals 2. And then if n is equal to 1 half, so suppose n is a 1 half at this point, you're going to get x equals ln 2 plus pi i over ln 2 plus pi i, which is equal to 1. But can x be 1? No, because negative 2 to the first power does not equal positive 2. So it's not going to work. That's why n has to be an integer, right? So let's go ahead and forget about that and look at some other specific values, such as if n is 0, we're going to get x equals ln 2 over ln 2 plus pi i. Right? That's going to work, and you can always test it out. If n is equal to 1, we're going to get something nicer, ln 2 plus 2 pi i divided by ln 2 plus pi i. Does that look like 1? No, but it, is it close to 1? It kind of it looks like it's close to 1, right? Now think about it. You can write this as ln 2 plus pi i over ln 2 plus pi i because I separated uh, this into pi plus pi and then plus pi i over ln 2 plus pi i. Now think about what would happen if you use this as an exponent and do negative 2 to the power of this, all right? Anyways, let's go ahead and take a look at the Wolfram Alpha, and we're going to compare our answers. And Wolfram Alpha gives us this answer. And I'm like, why did we get a different answer here, right? What was our answer? Well, well what we found was basically ln 2 plus 2n pi i divided by ln 2 plus pi i. But they don't look the same, right? Obviously, log means ln, right, uh, for Wolfram Alpha at least. Uh, and you can totally forget about this because it's just adding another 2 pi. You don't need it because we already have a, have a multiple of 2 pi. But these results are slightly different. Why? I want you to find out and let me know. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care. And bye-bye.